What's going on guys? Today we're out here in the beautiful Zion National Park. Actually my second night in a row out here. Last night I made this video, which you guys may have watched. If you haven't, you should definitely check that out for some of the best sunset tips. Today I'm out here shooting another sunset. Last night we were definitely blessed with a beautiful sunset resulting in this photo. Came back out, decided to roll the dice again tonight when we got these beautiful clouds. <music> Got some beautiful clouds tonight, which I'm gonna show you right here. The light is actually pretty good right now for what we're shooting, um, just because we've got these nice dark clouds and we have this nice band right below it that we could add a little bit of glow in post-processing and really make this photo look cool. So in this particular video, we hiked out to Observation Point, which is about three and a half miles each way for a total of seven miles. Sorry if you're outside the United States, I don't know what that equates to in kilometers, um, but for those of you in the United States, 3.5 each way, uh, it's relatively flat, a little bit of downhill at the end, uphill on the way back. Back, um, but it's a great place for photography. You do have to hike back in the dark, obviously, if you're shooting sunset. That's what we'll be doing today, but I thought it'd be worth it, and I'm really crossing my fingers that this sunset is going to be worth it. So, in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about what I'm using. I want to talk about what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, just to kind of walk you through my process and show you this beautiful location and this hopefully beautiful sunset. First thing I want to start with is just talking about the gear I use a lot. I get a lot of questions about the gear that I use in particular. Now, the only thing that is sponsored per se, or the only gear that got sent to me that I didn't pay full price for, was this tripod. I'll cover that first. It is a Slick Carbon Fiber 634. It's great for hiking. Um, I think Slick is a great company. I'm not just saying that because they sent me this tripod. I was a customer of theirs before they sent it to me. Long story short, it's really lightweight, really durable, and the price is just right in my opinion if you are paying for it, which obviously you guys are going to be paying for it. Um, it's not quite as expensive as some of the other competitors. You guys know who those are. I'm not going to name them in this video, um, but I do like my Carbon Fiber 634. You can even use the code Jackson15 if you want to get one. I included the link down below. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. Let's move on to the rest of the gear. Uh, I'm shooting with a Sony a7R4 here. I'm shooting right now with the Rokinon 14mm 2.8 autofocus lens for Sony. I just picked this thing up. I've been using it for about a week now um, and I've really liked it so far. I'm going to continue to use it and we'll see if I continue to like it. I'll probably have a review video coming for that in the future once I've got some more use on it. Um, other than that, I hiked out here with my Shimoda Action X50 bag. I like it so much better. I have another video where I reviewed the Action X50 versus the really popular F-Stop bag. I used to be sponsored by F-Stop. I used to get all those F-Stop bags. I like the F-Stop bags. I found the Shimoda bags so much better. Anyways, I like the Shimoda bags. That's the backpack I'm carrying. That's really all the gear I'm using, I think. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. That's pretty much it. So that's all the gear that I'm using. Really simple. One camera, one lens, no filters little tripod that's great for hiking. That's about it out here capturing, hopefully some beautiful conditions out here in Zion. I am using the 14 millimeter, which is really wide. One thing I always mention to people when you're shooting sunset, don't shoot blue sky. So if the sky was blue out here, I'd have my telephoto lens on right now. I'd be looking uh, into the scene at some of the finer details, some of the rocks. If there was some, if there was blue sky, there'd be sunlight hitting, which there isn't right now, but that sunlight would bring out some different compositions and what's gonna be available right now. I have my wide angle on because there's a lot of interest. There's a great sky sky above me, a great canyon below me, so there's a lot to see. So let me show you guys exactly what I'm looking at. So here's what we're looking at right now. I'm standing on this ledge. My camera is filming from up there, so the camera is looking back this way, but we are shooting this way, um, and we're getting this beautiful scene. As I said, dark clouds look really nice with this light here, which is kind of glowing through here. We've got probably about an hour before sunset, but I've just scoped this out with a, my wide angle, which is actually pretty similar to the composition I'm getting here on my GoPro. I'm getting this on the left side, add a little visual interest in the foreground um, and helping to balance the frame with the much heavier weighted right side of this image. You can see over here on the right, uh, these this kind of canyon side or canyon wall is a lot heavier per se like in the scene than on the left where it's like a little more narrow um, the other cool thing if you guys have been to zion this is actually angel's landing right here so there's people 
that are hiking up there. Probably not anymore, but earlier today there was people hiking all the way along the ridge there to Angel's Landing. But again, this is observation point. Beautiful looking down the canyon. There was some rain coming down here earlier. It doesn't look like there's gonna be any rain based on the forecast later tonight, but I'm hoping that this nice gap over here where the sun is setting is going to provide a little bit of light to splash onto these clouds and give me a nice sunset. So we'll keep you guys updated with exactly what I'm doing, but that is kind of the rundown of how the shoot tonight is gonna go. So one thing, especially if you're new to landscape photography or photography in general, that I always recommend when out here shooting a scene like this with high dynamic range, we've got a really bright sky in front of us and we've got a nice dark foreground below us. Uh, if you are using manual exposure, which I really recommend for a scene like this, you can use a setting that is called the zebra setting. And if you haven't heard of this zebra setting, I highly recommend turning it on if you're a newer photographer. If you're more experienced, you might not need it. I personally don't usually use it, but I do always recommend it to people at my workshops and whatnot because it is a helpful thing to make sure you don't blow out the sky. Because if you have anything blown out in your scene, you're not gonna be able to recover that detail. It's gonna be totally white and it's not gonna look good. You won't be able to do anything with it, even if you're shooting in raw. Um, so in order to turn that zebra setting on, um, most cameras, it's gonna be called zebra setting or something similar. Uh, on my Sony, I just go in and I select zebra zebra setting. You can turn on or off. I turn it to on. And then on my Sony a7R4, you have options as to what you want the level to be. Most cameras, the levels are going to be like low, medium, or high, or some are just on and off. Essentially what the numbers do is it makes it more uh, restrictive. So if it's on 100, it's only going to show me something that is actually 100% for sure blown out. Whereas if I'm on like 75, it's going to show me things that are getting close to being blown out. So it's up to you as to what setting you want, but maybe you can see there uh, my zebra on my screen. If I bring back the exposure here, as I open that up, you can see that zebra is where we're getting blown out or partially blown out in our scene. So we want to make sure that we have none of that zebra. If you're on 70, you can have a little bit of it, which is why I would recommend just turning that to like 95 or 100 and then make sure you don't have any of that zebra if the sun is in my scene i'm okay with just a little spot being uh in out of blown out having the zebra but i don't want like a whole bunch of it because that would mean that my image is blown out now alternatively you can also use the histogram which is right down here the histogram is going to tell you where the pixels in the image lie anything that's touching the right on the histogram is going to be blown out you can see there's hardly anything touching the right on this particular image but if i was to open it up you can see that now there's a lot more on the right so just something to help you nail the perfect exposure. You wanna make it as bright as you can for your foreground without having very much, if any, of that zebra. So I'd be looking about right there for my exposure for this particular image. All right, well, we've got our sunset over to the left, which is starting to light up the clouds over there. I'm hoping that the clouds behind me over here in my scene are gonna light up. One of the really cool things about what's going on right now, though, is, and maybe you can see it, but there's peaks in the distance way back there that are catching a little bit of sunlight, which A, is great for the photo because I always like getting a little extra light in there to add some depth and dimension. And in addition to that, that lets me know there's a gap in the horizon. So the sunlight is shining through and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will shine through and hit these clouds and we are going to have an absolutely crazy sunset. That's the goal. We'll see if it happens. Uh, a lot of times it doesn't, but that is a really good sign. If it's been cloudy for a while and there's a little, little, little stretch of light, that's a really good sign that it potentially is about to go absolutely crazy. So for my settings for a shot like this, I'm at ISO 100. There's nothing in my scene moving, so I don't care how slow the shutter speed is. Um, and so ISO 100 is perfect. I don't want the photo to be unintentionally noisy. Uh, and then I've got my aperture set at, I think it's at F10 right now. You could really set it anywhere between like F7.1 and F11 or so. I don't want to go much lower than that because then I'm going to have this kind of foreground that I've got here. It'll be a little bit blurry and I don't want to go much higher than that because then the whole image isn't going to be sharp because of something called image diffraction, which we're not going to talk about, but you can look that one up if you're curious what that means. Now, like I said, since I'm shooting a scene where nothing is really moving, there's no like trees blowing in the wind or anything like that, uh, my shutter speed doesn't really matter. So I'm going to adjust the shutter speed accordingly. That's going to be constantly changing over the period of the night. Like I mentioned a couple minutes ago, you want to use that zebra set in order to make sure you're not blowing anything out. You want to open up that exposure as much as you can without blowing things out. Trust me, when you're looking at it in the field, if you're new to shooting photography like this, you're going to look at it and think that, man, that image looks really, really dark. But trust me, that's how you want it. You're going to be able to bring up those darks later. If you're shooting on like a crop sensor or a camera that doesn't have quite as much dynamic range, then you might have to do some bracketing, which is where you are going to take a blown out exposure. You can combine them later. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video. It's a little bit outside the scope, but I did just want to mention it. Uh, but this video is more about showing you guys this beautiful location, hopefully this beautiful sunset.
All right, guys, well, that's a wrap. Maybe you can tell behind me, uh, it is dying off a little bit here. It was a pretty good sunset. Definitely not as good as the last night's was, but still a phenomenal sunset. Really good conditions earlier and was really happy with what we got. So we're gonna go ahead and make the hike out. And thank you guys so much for joining. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.